Welcome everybody to another edition of WWE 2006 here in TW 2020 as we're on the go-home shows for Clash of Champions. But before we get to that, a little reminder for folks is we do have the year-end awards going on and they will be running basically till the end of January in-game and maybe a little bit farther depending on the actual weeks. I have to still figure that out in my head. Regardless, um, just, you know, up next is Heal of the Year. Um, so, you know, Check Plumbo, of course, you know, was a fairly dominant heel, won the world title off Ray Jr., was the main event again with AJ Styles, Eddie Guerrero, who was in big feuds all throughout the year, you know, first with Canyon at the beginning of the year, including a big cage heat match, got his world title shot, um, then ended up feuding with Jack Evans and others all throughout the year. It was sort of like one of the top, your brother Ray, you know, one of the top heels on Nitro um, all throughout the year, even though he never got a big main event. Um, you know, wasn't quite the big event push he's had the past couple years. Kibben, of course, had the world title for a couple months at the beginning of the year. A shorter amount than you'd think, just that was when I had my long break, and but eventually did you know lose the title to Ray Jr. and of course the leader of the triumvirate, um, Nikita Colt, who was part of the you know led European Union, became the first women's world tag team champions along with Christina Busek. Then you know surprisingly beat you know uh, Trisha Sky for the women's world title at Bound for Glory near the end of the year, um, basically cleanly, and defended those titles that title at the latter match at Starcade. And then Rob Van Dam, you know, only has half the year as a heel. But he's a very effective heel, eventually, you know, basically turn heel and team up with Paul Heyman. So there you go. And, you know, just as also as a reminder for folks, um, you can still vote in the other awards. Like they're not like timed. Well, they're, they're timed in the sense in that I won't care about the, you know, votes after a certain point. Because um, I don't think you can actually turn off, like turn them off at any point. But, you know, we got Face of the Year, which is being won by AJ Styles fairly, you know, by a landslide. But you think, you know, Paul London, Trisha Sky, Brother of the Hardys were all better choices. Go ahead and vote. Uh, best women's wrestler is Gail Kim by a fairly big margin. But again, if you think Julian Aller, you call it Urshis Sky had a better year, go ahead and vote in there. Um, best tag team is America's Most Wanted. Evolution is right behind them, sort of surprisingly. Uh, Brooklyn Shelton, you know, were put, sort of put together at the end of the year, so, so I'm not surprised if they were tag team champions. The Hardys and KO. Um, then we got Male Wrestler of the Year, which is, you know, a you know, um, fairly big landslide AJ Styles. Then we got Palumbo, Ray Jr., and Rob Vedam. Kidmans has no votes. So if you think, you know, his world title reign deserves some recognition, or you think maybe Ray Jr. or Rob Van Anderson votes, or, you know, if you think, agree with the vast majority, think AJ Styles had the best you know, year, then, you know, go ahead with that. Let's get on with Nitro live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, so we start out with, you know, Jim Ross, remember, who is a, you know, big sign, was our, you know, his big signing, and it says, back out, time for a slobber knocker of a TV title match, as Ray Mysterio Jr. has to take that title off of Jamie Noble right now. 72. And then we go to the actual match, which, if you expect, is a very good high impact quick match between, honestly, two of the better wrestlers on the roster. You know, it is exactly what you expect. Noble trying to pick apart Ray Jr., Ray Jr. fighting back with, you know, his Ray Jr. flying moves around. You know, his knees are a little shot at this point in real life. I don't know how bad he is in the game, uh, but, you know, he probably does a little bit less. But, you know, obviously he sells that, uh, you know, the, the tax from Noble, like, you know, like like a mofo. Uh, Ray Jr. eventually gets his baby face fire. Uh, hits a few big moves, but as he's going for a springboard, Noble basically like dives into the ropes, shaking them, um, causing Ray Jr. to crotch himself. Noble rolls him into a uh, small package, puts his feet on the ropes, and picks up the pinfall victory just under the 10-minute time limit. And this gets a 78, probably mainly because of the time, as Ray got a 95, Noble got an 85. So yeah, this is basically just a time issue, but hey, it's TV title. It has to be a 10-minute t- t- uh, time limit, right? But still a very good match. Uh, post-match. Noble celebrates, you know, Cockley holding TV title up, and Ray Jr. looks upset in the ring, you know, sort of like, you know, he was just world champion a couple months ago, now he's losing to the TV champion, which, you know, has to be considered, you know, upsetting, no matter how great a wrestler Jamie Noble is. And this gets a 70, because, you know, loses a little bit of heat, but not the end of the world. Um, and we move forward, as we are backstage with Captivation, Lizzie Dumas, Lexi James, and Desiree Dawkins, um... And, you know, they're, they're, they're in the back and they, you know, start off as Lizzie James says, last week, Trisha, you made the biggest mistake of your time in WCW when you decided to stick your nose in captivation business again. We had our little run-ins last year, but you could have left us alone and we would have left you alone. As long as you, as long as you were clear, we were in control here. But you thought you could save Ron Jonah Lacey, but all you did was put a target on your back. Mickey James, I mean, not Mickey, Lexi James steps up and says, that's right. Trisha, you've always tried to be the hero, the blom bombshell to all these adoring, idiotic fans. Always a savior. But tonight, 
your little rescue act is going to come back to haunt you. And then Desri comes up and, you know, like a little spark plug heel, you know, says, and who better send the message than me? Trish, you've been atop the division for too long. And it's time for someone new to take the spotlight. Tonight, I'm just going to beat you. I'm going to humiliate you and prove this is the time for captivation here on Nitro. Because we're the force of the WC Women's Division, no matter where we are. And here we are on Nitro, and we are going to dominate. And then, you know, like Lizzie steps back and says, this isn't just about one match, Trish. This is about a shift in power, about years of where you thought you were better than me and the rest of these women. We're captivation. I know we're redefining what it means to be dominant in the division as we're back on the right path. And you're just a stepping stone on our path to glory. You should have stepped out of the way. You should realize that captivation is not stable to be trifled with. But since you didn't, tonight, Desiree is going to make an example out of you. And, you know, Desiree steps in and says, that's right, true. That's right, boss. You're going to regret ever coming to the aid of those two girls. You're going to ever come across the path of captivation. And when I'm done with you, the whole world locker room will think twice before getting in our way. Finally, Mickey James, you know, Lexi James fixes and his name says, this is going to be a warning to the entire WC Women's Division. Captivation is here not to step back, but to step in and take over. And there's nothing anyone can do to stop us. So there you go. A solid promo because I actually rated Desiree Dawkins. This gets to 67. Not bad as we move forward. And then we are backstage as Jerry River Ash is with Nikio and Stacey. And, you know, they, they talk about that tonight's a big main event. As Nikio takes on the truth, but the truth has refused to name who his partner is. And, you know, Cesar says, it doesn't matter who his partner is. I've got the best tag team in the world who are unjustly had their tag titles taken with them in a mess of a match called Tag Team Toronto. In a singles match, one on two, two on two, we would beat any team in the world at Starcade or Ash. My men have been, keep, have been training in the best Japanese dojos in the world. Now they're here in Nitro to take apart the truth and whoever decides to make the mistake of crossing our path. Tonight's just a reminder of how great my men are and how great Minkeo is. So 79, decent promo. Of course, Stacey was the only one as Kaz and Yang just got to look scary. As, you know, there we go. 70, good stuff building up a main event, which is like it's, which they said is Minkeo versus the truth and a mystery partner. And then we have a pretty solid match, as of course what happened was set up last week, which I forgot to add a angle to. That's my bad, and not the other world. As Brother Ray takes on Jonathan Toro, and here's the other thing: like Brother Ray, like he doesn't dominate the match, but Toro like gets his shots in, but like it's not an open match. Like it's not quite a Brother Ray domination, but like Toro, like he sort of like shrugs off Toro's big moves. Toro even actually goes for the uh, big, you know, roaring elbow, uh, which I know I had a name for, um, but like Brother Ray just like easily ducks under it and like throws Toro around and then he eventually hits the full Nelson bomb for the pinball victory right in the middle of the ring. This gets a solid 75. Brother Ray gets a 92. Jonathan Toro gets a 63. Now I'm going to, maybe I, it was just the roaring elbow. I, I'm sure I had a name for it. Anyway, um, but as post-match, you know, Toro sl slides out of the ring and Brother Ray celebrating says, was that enough for you, Bischoff? When out of nowhere, Eddie Guerrero slides in from the back or, you know, from the ringside area, and drills Eddie, drills Brother Ray in the back with a chair. And he's sort of like, he's yelling as sort of like, you know, the ringside mics to pick it up. I'm not here for Bischoff. I'm here because you think you're at the top. This is still my show. Ray, and I'm going to prove it to you right now. As he waltz it, Brother Ray again in the back with a chair, and he walks away doing that cocky Eddie Guerrero thing. 81, good stuff. Um, Only gets, only got an 81 because of a four-minute segment. But fun stuff, as it seems like we actually have our actual feud here, which is going to be Brother Ray and Eddie Guerrero. Too bad for Toro, I guess. And then we go backstage, where um, the truth is, you know, getting ready when Lance Storm walks in, and the truth is confused, and it's like ready for fight, and Storm's like, no, I come in your peace. You see, I'm trying to turn a new leaf here on Nitro, because I'll be honest, everybody's gone. Billy's still over on Revolution. We all know where Awesome is. But I'm here to be my own man, finally. So, if I can be serious for a minute. You had a match. Now you don't have a partner. You have some other men, but here's the reality. I'm the best techno wrestler in the world, and I know how to win tag team matches. I am was a three-time tag champ with Awesome for a reason. 
and I can get that ring and take care of Kaz and Yang with you. And the truth, like, he doesn't rap. He's actually serious now. He's like, Lance, you want to be a partner? That's fine, because you're damn right. You are a great wrestler. But if this is a setup, I'm not going to be some nice guy. You are going to get cooked if you get in my way and if you screw me over. You end up in the streets, and Calgary has not got you ready for that at all. Storm, you know, says, hey, that's fine. But I'm not. I'm your partner tonight. He extends his hand, truly accepts it, and looks like we have a tag team match. Lance Storm and the Truth versus Kaz and Yang. Yes, my main event on a Nitro is Kaz Hayashi and Jimmy Yang, managed by CC Keebler versus Ron Killings and Lance Storm. Oh, what a wild wrestling world this is. Good, still good stuff, you know. Crowd still hates the fact Storm's turning face, but, you know, what can you do? Um, then we go backstage for an interesting segment as Eric Bischoff is backstage doing, you know, Eric Bischoff nature work. And uh, Eric, you know, Celine Cartier comes in and she comes up with a Derek Herman look and you chance for, you know, Bischoff's desk. And, you know, Bischoff sort of leans back and says, Celine, what do you want? And your know, Cartier says, Bischoff, I know I can be called for the Women's World Championship. I just need one more chance in that ring. One more opportunity for myself. I was this close to defeating her. And, you know, here's off, like, you know, sort of shrugs and says, Celine, you're a talented wrestler. Nobody can deny that. But I'm about ratings. I'm about big moments. I'm about drawing money and fans into that arena. And here's reality. You're a tremendous competitor, and I know that. But you need to earn your opportunities. These people, they want something new. They want a new challenger. They want someone who's earned it. So I just can't hand out title matches just because you come in here and ask nicely. Cartier sort of looks down, but you know, she looks back up. Fine. I understand that, Eric. I respect it. But I know what I have to take the champion. I just need the chance to show it. I'm not asking for any favors, but just a fair shot. I guess I'm like, that's fine. But if you want a fair shot in that ring, you earn it. You go in that ring and you beat people like Lexi James, like Roni Jonah, like even Trisha's guy. You've been champion four, and you can be champion again. But make me give it to you. Make the fans want you to have it. And Cartier, you know, is, you know, again, like, looks down and says, that's what I'll do then. I'll face whoever I need to face, and I'll climb back to the top. I'm not afraid of hard work, bitch off. I'll remember the championship match, and when I do, I'll become the world champion once again, and that's a promise. And... You know, Bischoff is like, hey, that's what I like to hear. That spirit I make the champion. Give me the top kinder, and I'll get your match. Nature is all about opportunities for those who deserve it. And your Cart Cartier finished up says, you won't regret that, Bischoff. I'll show you, I'll show Colt, and I'll show the world that Celine Cartier is not just a contender, but a champion in the making. Merci, Paul, c'est a chance. Which is, you know, just, uh, you know, French word, thank you for this chance, which you probably could have figured this out. As she walks out, as Yon starts, you know, put over that, you know, this is what nature is all about, competition and respect and being the best in that ring. 83, good stuff. And then we have a um, Cruiserweight title match as Maverick Chance. The ex-James guy comes out, you know, on his in his motorcycle. And I'm sure we just set up a little ramp for him to, like, jump off and then, you know, take his hand, um, take his uh, helmet off. I just forgot the word helmet there for a second. You know, and comes down to the ring to a decent pop. And he's up against Hydro Kadaka. And this is just a spot fit for his nine minutes. Like everybody's there dives, you know, flying around. Hidaka gets his kicks in, but Chance takes over and eventually hits some sort of wacky um, top rope move to defend the title in a London under 10 minutes. This gets a 56. Chance gets a 58. Hidaka gets 61. We get the pre show penalty, but hey, we're building these people up. Uh, fun stuff, you know, but Jeffy's just a straightforward. Hey, Maverick Chance is here on Nitro. He's a cruiserweight champion and he's getting some wins. And then he celebrates to a 38 because again, we're building him up. <laughs> And then we come back for commercial, and Alex Wright, the music hits, and the crowd, you know, loses their shit booing, as, of course, last week, Alex Wright attacked Bill Gobert and took him out with his knee. Um, you know, Jim Ross explains, you know, this bastard, this son of a bitch, Alex Wright tried to end Bill Gobert's career. And Bill, he's currently convalescing back in his home in Atlanta. But, you know, Wright gets in the ring and says, you know, the, the crowd is, you know, um, chanting, Goldberg, Goldberg. 
You know, Alex takes my says, you can chant all you want. Chant it all night long, but he's not here. He is down in Georgia, licking his wounds, and after actually facing someone, will do what is needed for men like him. What you noticed was just last week was not more attack. It was a statement. A statement that even the man, Goldberg, is just flesh and blood. He's not a terminator. He's not a predator. He's not a monster. He's not indestructible. He's just a man with blood, sweat, and well, as you saw last week, bones. A man, like anyone else, who can be taken apart by a true wrestling maestro like myself. You see, for years, Bill Goldberg got opportunities. I was tipped to be one of the biggest stars in the business, but then the business changed. And those opportunities were handed to people like Goldberg. While I was perfecting the art of wrestling, I was told to dance more. While Goldberg was given opportunity after opportunity. But I was watched as he was put on a pedestal, treated like a wrestling god, while True Downs and me were pester side. But I didn't let that stop me. When WCW had its own rebirth, I did as well. And I rose to the top, winning championships over and over again. But still, the top was the die to me because of men like Goldberg. But I did what needed to be done. I got him that ring, and I, within that spotlight, I took him out. I showed the world that Goldberg is nothing but a three-move menace who can be taken apart just like any other professional wrestler. I prove that even the man can be broken down methodically and systematically by someone who knows the ring better than he knows a football field. Now, that we can focus on wrestlers who truly master, matter. So, Goldberg, if you're watching down there in Georgia, hear me loud and clear. Stay away from my show, stay away from my ring. You've had your time, but it's time for Das Wonder Bar to nominate. It's time for wrestlers who can do more than just spear, jackhammer, and scream. I'm the future of this company. No, I'm the president of this company. I ought to be overshadowed by the lack of yous any longer. I'm sure this is a warning, Goldberg. Walk away. Stay away. Or else. Then you put down the mic. Of course, lots of booze. But, you know, statement of Goldberg that, to Goldberg there. This gets a 91. And we're sort of cooking with gas here. Honestly, Last couple of months, right, has impressed me because, like, after I turned him heel, like, back to booking some booking notes, like, I was giving him, going to give him the push up till Starcade and just at least see how over he got. And hey, he's gotten decently over. So here we are. And then we uh, cut to backstage where John Tatoro is leaving the arena, sort of morose. But we're sort of like seeing it from the view of what seems to be a first person view. And, you know, no voice, but just like, you know, hmm, that's something interesting. Which gets a 57. And then we're backstage as Jeremy Barash is with Rickless Roberts and Tracy Roberts. And, you know, he asked them about, you know, Maverick Chance win tonight in a Cruiserweight title match. And, you know, Tracy Roberts steps in. My brother doesn't have to say it. It's pretty simple. Maverick, deep down, you know, you got that championship by chance, just like your name. My brother is the best technical cruiserweight in this business, and he will rise to the top. But, Maverick, get back in this ring with him one-on-one. -on -one. And he will snatch that title away from you and break your bones and make you tap out. Because he is reckless and he will destroy you. So, unless you're scared, accept the challenge for a rematch. 55, not bad again, building things up. And then we have a very interesting segment here, which actually is a lot better than I thought. As, um, you know, Ken the music hits and he comes down to the ring to a big pop. You know, just, you know, slapping hands, but, you know, still being his, his cocky self. Um, and, you know, Anderson comes out to the ring and says, well, 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 isn't another edition of WCW Nitro? But sometimes I get the feeling that I'm not appreciated by those in the back. But there are guys back there who think I don't deserve my spot here and guys who try to steal a spotlight away from me. So at times like that, well, you just got to speak your mind and don't care if people think you're an a-hole. A-hole chance, because again, this is 2006, is Anderson, what can you do? So, that's Wonder Bar, Alex Wright. You talk a big game, buddy, but let's be honest. You didn't beat Goldberg. You hit him with a chair. Anybody can hit him with a chair. I could hit him with a chair. Hell, we could drag, we could drag, um, I'm looking for a name. 
that's no longer here. We could drag Rotor our animal out of retirement, and he could hit him with a chair. So you did nothing, and you're walking around like you're the cock of the walk. Fun stuff. Maybe you should go back to dancing. And then there's Jamie Noble. Jamie, I'm not, I'm not going to deny you're tough, because you're a tough son of a bitch. You're a great wrestler, but let's face it. When I look at you, I don't see a pit bull. I see a chihuahua with a bad attitude. Keep barking, little guy. Maybe one day you'll scare somebody. Big face pop for that. And he continues. And last but not least, Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett, I admit you got me at Starcade. But I think we're done in the long run. No, no, no. You see, you're, you think you're the chosen one, and you got that title shot at Super Bowl. I can't deny that. But you can smash all the guitars you want. You'll never be the star you want. And next time you get in that ring with me, I'll show you you're not George Strait. You're, God, I, I can't think of a bad country music singer. You're Chris Gaines. There we go. <laughs> um, and, you know, as you look about to say something else, of all the music you hit, Hank Tolan's music hits, and yes, the former, uh, I guess Chippendales dancer, former partner of uh, Ray LePen, comes down to the top of the ramp, and you know then gets you know, um, and you know uh, Tolan's at the top of the ramp, and Anderson's like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 Tank Tolan, ladies and gentlemen, uh, did you get lost your way to the gym, a bachelorette party, or did you just give me a come out here to give me a personal demonstration on how to make fifty-year-old moms very happy? Um, you know, Tolan can use him another ring says, Anderson, you think you're pretty fat, funny. You think this is all a joke? This isn't comedy club. This is WCW Nitro. And this is where men fight. Not tell jokes that these idiots in the crowd can laugh about. And Anderson's like, Tank, I have respect for men, people. I have respect for even people I don't like. You notice I didn't talk about Eddie Guerrero? Because Eddie Guerrero is an asshole, but he's an asshole through and through, and he's one of the best talented wrestlers in the world. Hell, I didn't even make fun of Chuck Palumbo, because Chuck Palumbo, he's a tough son of a bitch, and he was a world champion for a reason. But you? You're coming out here to lecture me? Dressed like that? Come on. You could have put on some clothes, buddy. So, you know, just take your protein shakes and your dumbbells and go back to the locker room where nobody can care about you for another couple months. And you told him fires back. Ken, let me tell you something. I'm the sexiest man in WCB for a reason. But I'm more than just a pretty face. I'm here on my own, not playing second fiddle to anyone, especially an overrated manager. But especially not a loud mouth like yours. It's my time to shine here in Nitro, not yours. And if Ken says, Tank, I hate his break to you, man, but this isn't your bougie pageant. This isn't a late night dance session. This isn't a late night gym session. This is WWE Nitro where the big boys play. And frankly, your sexiest man shtick doesn't impress anybody anymore. So I was like, oh, I'm impressed plenty still, I understand. But I'm not here to show off. I'm here to compete and win. Maybe you're too busy laughing off the fact Jeff Jarrett kicked your ass at Starcade. But I'm going to impact, I'm going to start by beating you in that ring if you're ready to face me. Beat me? That's a big talk coming for a guy who seems more concerned about his abs than his ring ability. But, you know, Tank, here's the thing. Sometimes you need to be an a-hole. And he whaps. It, like, he knocks someone down with a punch. And these officials come down. And it looks like we have a match set up for next week, maybe? Hmm, interesting. Um, good stuff. 87. Uh, Anderson probably carried this. Probably on his own, it would have been like 100. But fun stuff. And yeah, this is just an interesting little, I don't want to say mini feud, but, you know, fun little feud. Um, as the other, honestly, the other top guys on Nitro are currently, you know, doing other stuff. And then we have our women's match as, uh, oh shit, what the hell happened here? Hold on. Oh, I forgot, I made Trisha the victor, and I forgot to, okay. So, this should be a DQ, um, but I forgot to make it an unfinished DQ. Basically, you know, it's, it's a good match, you know, 
you know, Desiree Dawkins isn't, you know, isn't a good solid rising wrestler and she gets to be, do the heel annoying spark plug stuff. But eventually, you know, Trisha Sky takes over because she's Trisha fucking Sky. And, you know, she has hit the uh, chick kick, whatever we're calling it. And she's about to go for the, uh, you know, Sky's the Limit, aka Stratus Faction. When, of course, Lexi Lee Lee James attacks her from behind and just wallops her with a Lexi DDT as the ref calls for the bell. And it looks like there's going to be a beat down again as it gets to 74 when some country rock music hits. And out comes O-D-B to make the save. Oh shit, and I forgot to make her a cameo. My bad. Oh well, only gets a 66. Uh, she officially turns face because uh, I forgot to turn her face originally. But 66, O-D-B makes a save for this guy and runs off Captivation. So yeah, good stuff. Unfortunately, I forgot to change, make, like I was, I had O-D-B ready on fighting and that should have been a cameo thing. Because she just came and basically like chased them away. But yeah, what can you do? Shit happens. And then... We're backstage as AMW are hanging out again, you know, um, at their, actually, they have a bar. We're just leaning into things here. They have a bar. They're drinking, you know, setting, setting shops, maybe just like construction people, uh, maybe like some random lower card people, you know, maybe t- t- Jerry's there. Um, when Jarrett and simply John and Divine walk by and, um, you know, they sort of like stare at AMW and shrug things off. Um and, you know, James Storm calls out and says, hey, here, Divine, guys like you who got run off by one guy, you deserve a drink, don't you? Come on. And, you know, Jarrett turns around, pissed and says, slap nuts, what the hell are you saying? AJ Styles had the day of his life last week when he managed to take both of us out. He had the moment that all wrestlers dream of, but his dream will be a nightmare when the chosen one kicks his out at Super Brawl if he even survives Clash of Champions. One or the other, I will walk out of Super Brawl, the world champion. And Chris says, that's fine and all, but we don't care. We're my Chris most wanted. We're four time time champions. And we've been yapping your gums. We've been winning titles. Jared says, slap nuts. You better learn to respect people here on Nitro. You may have done whatever you wanted over Revolution, but this is a new time and a new show. And you need to respect who's the top of the show. And, you know, James says, sorry about your damn luck, but we do respect yourself for this show. AJ Styles, Brother Ray, Ramsey Jr., and Jarrett, like, just gets angry, Divine sort of holds him back, and says, you'll pay for this. You know, just a fun little segment, you know, putting over MW's characters and Jarrett and Divine, and who knows what might happen next with that. And then we have another commercial for Titus Protection, you know, Tomco Protection, you know, basically say, you know, he's he's been, he's backed up the best, now he can back up you. 70, good stuff. And then we have our Revolution Recap focusing on the Angle Helms confrontation last week. And it's time for our main event. I think. Okay. This gets a 90 because all these guys are really freaking good. I mean, even Yang is getting a 78 at this point. So yeah, these guys, I mean, Jesus Christ, Kaz. <laughs> I mean, this is just an awesome, awesome, like, match. Like, there's a little bit of, like, you know, because Storm's still officially heal. But, like, he wrestled basically clean, but also he does some heal stuff against Kaz and Yang as sort of, like, you know, get to get the crowd, you know, with him a little bit. And there's even some, like, fun, you know, uh, double team stuff, even though it's a little awkward, you know, because they didn't get a chem- chemistry note. But eventually things break down. Sees Keebler gets involved, um, you know, and distracts the truth just long enough for Kaz to nail him with a kick of doom. And he gets a pinfall victory as Yang is like, has brought, you know, um, Lance Storm to the outside before he can make the save. And he'll get the win here in a little over 12 minutes. This gets a 90. Truth gets a 74. Lance Storm wins an 87. Yang gets a 78. And Kaz gets a freaking 98. Um, so, you know, Storm's on the outside. But uh, it looks like Ninkyo are going to send a message as, um, you know, Yang, you know, basically sets up a chair to hold against, uh, you know, the truth's head who's still like you know who's still like woozy after getting kicked and kaz gets set up for a chair aided kick of the head which would not be good for anybody when storm rushes in pushes the truth out of the way and he's the one who gets walked with the chair saving the truth and proving he's a true baby face 81 decent ending to the show here and overall the show itself gets an 88 good stuff see that we're at the point where that match can be an event and get a 90 honestly really good show um Matches, again, we're just building stuff, but fun stuff as we're moving on to the go-home show for Clash of Champions on Revolution. First, we need to see things. Yeah, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, Impact's now on its own. We'll see what what is goes wacky with that. 
I mean, I'm I'm totally expecting to do some random fire rings or high rings of people. Um, because you know, JBL, you know, like Vex now in charge. Well, so we'll see like if that switch over does anything wacky as far as the um what the game does. I could totally see him dropping people, hiring new people, or doing other fun stuff. Of course they don't have TV quite yet, but you know, that is what it is. All right, there we go. So, mm, no weird, I mean, sure, yes, that's still me. Okay, let's see here. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, looks like she'll have a short run in impact. Um, that's interesting. So we got a 2.10, which, you know, isn't bad. And then Raw, let's see, Raw had um, Thrasher defeat Adam Jacobs in an undercard match. Uh, Fit Finley and the Outcast defeat Fistra, Sadie Man and Maven in 71. Vampiro defeat Charlie Hawson in 69. Molly Hollow defeated Little Blood in 87. DDP divis defeated Sky of Fall, Kali in 79. Jericho Punk got a random 100, because of course it did. Uh, Big Show defeat Stephen Richards in an 87. And yeah, they got a 2.21. So fun stuff. Um, is there anything else super important? Nope. Okay, I'll be in a wrestling from Winnipeg. Did, an inner, did a certain Winnipegian guy wrestle here? No, but uh, Scott Demore, Sean Beer, Sean Spears, Paul Damon, and yeah, those people did. Anyway, I'll be back in just a second with Revolution. All right, welcome everybody to Revolution live from Charleston, West Virginia, in front of a little over 13,000 people. And the show starts out with your world champion, AJ Styles, coming out of the ring to a big pop. As, you know, he gets in the ring and he takes the mic and he says, Revolution, we're just three days away from Clash of Champions. And I stand for you as your WWE world champion. Now, I've been called the face that runs this place. And I earned that title by facing and beating the best. But there's one man who I'm getting in that ring in just a few days. Who I have a lot of respect for, but who I also want to call out right now. My opponent, Sean O'Hare. Big pop as Sean O'Hare comes down to the ring. And, you know, he comes down and faces, you know, basically nods at Styles. And he says, Sean, we both know, and everybody in this audience knows, you had an impressive run in WWE. You've been legends, you've held the gold, and you showed you're one of the toughest guys in this company. So let me remind you of something right now. I'm the man holding this belt. As he points to the WWE World Championship. I'm the man who's setting the bar in WCW. And Clash of Champions, I plan on keeping that way. Hair takes me and says, AJ, I've got nothing but respect for you. You're not a champion, at least so far. But respect doesn't change the fact I'm coming for that title. I've been in, in the ring with the best that has ever done it. Eddie, Booker, Canyon, even Flair. I read the legends and I made a name for myself as the future shock of this business. And at Clash of Champions, I'm ready to reclaim what used to be mine. And you can call yourself the face that runs this place all you want, and I get that. But AJ, I'm not just any challenger. I'm a force to be reckoned with. I'm the man who's going to shock the world when I take that title from you at Clash of Champions, because that's what I do. I deliver when the chips are down, and I prove myself every single night. And, you know, AJ files back. Sean, I expect nothing less from you. But here's the reality. You bring the shock, but I bring the phenomenal. And Clash of Champions is going to be a clash of two of the best wrestlers in the world. But I'm not just holding this title because it looks good. I'm only because I am the best in this business today. And I still will be the world champion at the end of Clash of Champions. Now here it says, you can th you can think you'll be able to do that, but I plan on bringing a future shock to you and everybody in that audience. When I hit you with the Widowmaker and pin you one, two, three. And I remind everybody why I was the world champion and the biggest rising, and one of the biggest stars in this business not too long ago. And AJ sort of like smiles and says, hmm, I remember your accomplishments, but here's the thing. I was here too, Sean. I was just watching from the sidelines. I was making history myself. World Tag Titles, Cruiserweight Titles, some of the biggest matches that rebuilt this company. But now I'm here at the top. This isn't just about the past couple of years, Sean. This is about the here and now. And right now, I'm the champion. I'm the man who sets the standard every single day in this company. And Sean, let's be honest here. 
I respect hell of you, but you kind of blew it. You let this title slip through your fingers, but I've grabbed every opportunity and I've made the most out of it. I'm the true future shock of WCW. As a class champions, I'm just letting title, I'm proving a point. And then, you know, as they're facing off, Kid Man music hits and he comes out to the top of the ramp. And you know, big boos for the former WWE World Champion who has April Hunter and well, nobody else at the moment here. As he takes Mike and says, well, 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 isn't this interesting? Two of these idiotic crowd's favorites had bull horns. It's almost like at the end of the day, this title means more than everything more than anything else. I know that. And Sean and Asia, you, you both know that. Because we're all members of an exclusive club when it comes to professional wrestling, a former WWE world champion. But Sean, while you're busy focusing on class champions, don't forget about tonight's main event. If you're right in that ring against me, I'm here to remind everybody on Revolution why I held that world, world title. I'm just another name on the roster. I am part of the elite in this company. I've been at the top and what it takes to get there again. So when I beat you in the ring, I'll prove no matter what happens in the class of champions, I'm still at the top of this business. And you know, AJ steps in this, Sean, some champions you and me, but Kibben, wherever you're planning, just know this, I'm ready for anything and anybody. This championship means everything to me. And I'll, I'll go through you, I'll go through Sean, I'll go through anybody in order to keep it. And then O'Hare takes my sister, sort of like takes him, AJ, there's a little stare down. And he says, Billy, you want to make your present felt? That's fine. But you have a big game. But let's not forget. The tournament is gone. You're out here on your own. And being elite in the past doesn't guarantee anything in the present. Now it's just you and me. And I put on showing you and everybody else why I'm going to be in that ring challenging for the world championship at Clash of the Champions. And taking that belt. And that's a damn guarantee. Kevin fires back. You know, being alone doesn't change a thing O'Hare. I don't need a stable behind to prove my worth. I've done it before and I'll do it again. And tonight's going to be a reminder why I deserve to be in that ring with either of you two battling for that title. And he just ups and says, wait, wait, wait. As long, as fun as it is to talk about that tonight, I'm the face that runs this place. I'm handling this belt. belt. And Kevin, fine. You... Get lucky and manage to beat O'Hare tonight. You've put yourself in the conversation. But class champions, it's about me and Sean, and no matter walks out of the challenger, I'll be ready. Hey, man, sorry. Cockley says, Styles, enjoy the title while you can. Enjoy that 15 pounds of gold. Because whether it's you or O'Hare walking out of class Champions, champions, know this. After what I do tonight, I'll be coming that title. I'm here to win and be at the top once again. And nothing and nobody not you, O'Hare, and not you, Styles, are going to stop me. So I guess this gets 79 minutes because it was only four minutes as opposed to eight. I had to cut it down from six because, you know, timing reasons. But fun stuff and sort of like, you know, basically announces the main event and um, of the night and sort of builds like the face and face tension. But then we go to the ring for our opening match, which is Shane Helms defeating Chavo Guerrero Jr. in a little under 10 minutes with the Nightmare on Helm Street. This is a back and forth match and, you know, Shane... And Shane, you know, does a little bit of cheatery, but the actual finish is basically, you know, clean. You know, Chavo gets a little bit of offense and actually goes for the frog splash. Shane gets out of the way, drops him with a super kick, hits a nightmare on Helm Street, and gets a clean pinfall right in the middle of the ring. A 77 overall, Helms gets an 88, Chavo gets a 71. Good stuff. And afterwards, he takes the mic himself. As Chavo rolls out and goes to the back. And wow, okay, he, this, okay. Well, I guess it helps being rated by ankle. And Helm says, Tonight, I proved once again why I'm one of the best in the business. But here's the thing. I could stay in here in this ring and remind everybody why I'm the greatest Jesus Henshin of all time. I can remind every single one of you morons in this crowd that I made him in Starcade as a WWE World Champion at the top of this business. But I won't. Because it seems none of that matters to Kurt Angle. See, Kurt Angle's an outsider. He walked into this business and almost immediately shot to the top. Everybody says it's because of pure talent, including you idiots in this crowd. But, Kurt, you're a gold medalist. 
And that's an achievement. But this isn't the Olympics. Pro wrestling isn't about medals. It's about titles. It's about getting in that ring and doing anything to rise to the top. You have to prove yourself night after night, just not one day. And you don't have to respect what I've done because you don't understand it. I have to fight tooth and nail for everything I got. I made changes to myself that made me a pariah to these morons, but made me rise to the top in this business where nobody ever thought I'd get to. So, at Clash Champions, I'm going to teach you a lesson in respect and a lesson what it means to be a wrestler in WCW. Because here's the thing, Angle. Winning that Olympic gold medal kind of made you a legend. You had a broken freaking neck after all, right? But here's the thing. I faced legends before, and I've kicked them in their teeth. Some of them run off to other companies, become shells of themselves. Hell, some of them all ran all the way to the champ, Japan to escape the reality of facing me in that ring. But they realized underestimating Shane Helms was the biggest mistake they've made in their career. So, Angle, underestimate me. Make your jokes. Talk about your gold medals. Write me off as just a first opponent to prove how great you are. But at Clash of Champions, I'm going to show you why I am the superstar of Revolution. I'm going to show you that it's not going to be going to gold or your amateur background. It's about this ring. And it's about showing I'm just that damn good. So when the dust settles and the bell rings hurt and you're lying there defeated, shocked, and the wrestling world talks about what happened and what a big moment it is. You're going to realize something, Kurt, that it's damn true that Shane Helms is still a superstar of revolution. And that's not just a catchphrase, Kurt. That's a fact. So again, sort of like more serious promo because like, you know, Helms has sort of been not quite a joke character, but like been over the top. And this was a reminder to like the audience to hey, Helms, really good wrestler. He's there for a reason. Like he's just not a pushover for ankle. Hundred good stuff. But, you know, he's still a heel because, well, she, she, Shane helps in this in this scene. Uh, then we go backstage where uh, Social Seed are, like, doing sort of, like, you know, WCW magazine shoot or, I guess, an online shoot at this point. Who knows? You know, so they're, you know, they're in their fancy dress, you know, because, again, they're socialites. You know, they're baby faces. Again, it makes sense. But then in walk Scale Kim and Allie Danger, like, sort of, like, snarking. Look, the tag champions, we called them out last week. And they're still saying nothing and doing nothing. And things are clear as, you know, anybody else, Radcliffe, walk up to Kim in danger. And, you know, Annie's a little more striking says, Gail, you're a former women's world champion. So you're great. But let's be honest. The last time you and Allie were in a big tag match, if I remember right, somebody got their ass power bombed off a ramp. Isn't that right? And Nikki says, oh yeah, I watched that happily backstage. And Gail gets upset, says, I'm still a head bitch in charge of this division. And if I want a title shot, I'll take it from you. And Ace says, no, you're going to take anything. You want to get in that ring and beat one of us tonight? To earn a title shot at Clash Champions? That's fine. But tonight, we'll, we'll prove why we're the champions. And either one of us, me or Nikki, can get in the ring and kick your ass or kick Allie's and prove why we're the top dogs of the tag division and why we're that damn special and why everybody wants to look at us. Gail agrees and a match is made earlier tonight between her and Nikki Radcliffe. 59, not bad. You know, still building the other two women, Allie is Allie, Gail's not bad. And then we have another uh, match as we have, you know, building up to the big women's tag a title match at Clash Champions. We have European Disunion tagging up for the first time, I think in a little bit, take out Angel Fox and her friend, Ned and Hurt. Um, look, the baby face is a little shallow on the show at the moment. Anyway, um, so it's a back and forth match. And really the story of this match isn't so much, um, uh, like, like, you know, the tag match because like, it's, you know, we have our spots, you know, Nikki and, uh, Angel Fox get in the ring. But really what happens is like basically near the end of the match, like, uh, Angel Fox, like actually hits a near fall on Nikita Cult and Nikki, Nikita goes wild on Angel. They're both eventually tagged out, but the fight continues to the top, and that distracts uh, Nanny Hart just enough where she basically basically like suplex hell over, locks the mission, and gives a tap out. But the fight is still on between Angel Fox and Nikita Cult. As this gets to seventy nine, 
Uh, Busek gets a 61, Nikita Cole gets an 85, Nadher gets a 43, and Angel Fox gets a 68. But both women continue to fight all the way to the back, you know, through the through the uh, ring entrance into, you know, so the backstage area. Puerto Rico shows break them apart. But as they're breaking apart, Angel Fox, you know, runs in and hits the Angel Snap on Nikita Cole, taking her down right before Clash of Champions as this gets to 79. And then uh, we have a backstage segment as we, we're basically, you know, in media res here as Tay Long is trying to explain to Monty. Look, Playa, I understand it. You're one of my biggest stars. But if just a couple weeks since draft, things are in flux. So you just, we just didn't have the moment in the match to get you on class champions. And when I say, I'm the alpha male, Teddy. I'm the dominant athlete of this show. And you don't have... A match to give me the alpha male, the master of Serengeti. That's BS, and you know it. And you know, as Tay's about to explain, uh, Kenyon like sort of comes into the uh, what's comes into the office and says, "Hey, Toddy, Teddy, I was just thinking about Clash of Champions." And he turns to see Monty. Oh, guess you're doing something. Anyway, see you in a minute. And Monty turns to Teddy and says, "Him." And he's like. And Teddy's like, wait, 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 you want him? You want, you want Kanan's player, a former world champion, just like that? I'd have to set that up and heat it up for the crowd. And Monty says, I want him now. And Teddy starts with Kanan, and Kanan's like, whatever, I'll prove any night, anywhere, that I'm the best in the business and that nobody's better than Kanan. And I was like, we'll just see that when you hit it with the bounce. And they have a stare down. Tay Long's player, I guess we got a big match for Clash of Champions. Monty Brown, Canyon. Now, is this called Jesse had no time to set up this match in the prior week because of uh, drafts and setting everything up? Maybe. Um, but hey, still a, bit, still a big match. Um, yes, the internet you would hate it today, but even back then there would part of there would be a thread about the bad booking of that. <laughs> Anyway, we get 100 off of that because he's, these guys are all great, even Teddy, and we move on. And then we have uh, Macias killing Mark Briscoe in a little over a minute with Crucifix Powerbomb. Um, yeah, Mark Briscoe is here to die, and that's what he does. Nothing, again, nothing fancy here, just like, you know, just putting over Macias. And, but as Macias, like, you know, is holding up his fist, out comes Chuck Palumbo, and he attacks, you know, uh, Macias from behind, and he goes to attack him. But uh, here's the problem. Macias is not Rey Mysterio Jr. He's not AJ Styles. Hell, he's not even, you know, bigger guys. Um, Plumas face off with. He's a monster. He's a monster the crowd likes right now, but he's a monster. So he sort of like shakes it off, and they start fighting. Macias has the advantage. But then, you know, Mark Dindrak, Magnificent One, comes down, and he can help Palumbo. And even with two men, you know, Macias still to hold his own, but... It's still two on one with two of the biggest guys. You know, Plumbo and Jindrak are two big SOBs. And it looks like, you know, they're about to do a beatdown. When Paul Lennon, the US champion who's facing off Jindrak at at the pay per view, runs in and, you know, runs in with a chair, runs in the game off. And then you have Paul Lennon and Macias standing together, which is an odd look. But there you go. So just, you know, standard little attack and save. Um, so this gets a. 84, and I guess I didn't make that official, but yeah. I mean, I, I assume people would have figured that out by the main event of the first uh, revolution, but there you go. Plumbo versus Macias. Yeah. 84, not bad. I sort of rated everybody, so that was sort of what probably knocked it down, but still, really good angle. And then we're backstage as we have a little appreciation society as, um, you know, we're backstage, and Paul Heyman is being fed grapes and, like, you know, given drinks by some beautiful Ghanaian women, as Prince would say, and he's good birds with Rob Van Dam and him. And Heyman's like, see, Rob, I told you. Jose, Skipper, they're good men. They know how this business should be run. And as your advocate, that's why I'm having you team with them tonight against Jack Evans and Booker and Shelton. And Jose says, yes, it is. I have all these beautiful Ghanaian specimens. These women, I have Ilya Skipper, and in a couple of days, we will become the world tag team champions and shock the world. But tonight, Ravidam, we will help you 
defeat that little punk Evans and Booker and Shelton. You see, Booker, Shelton, we are true black actors, it looks like. And tonight, you'll just see a little of that. And then Hamstep says, Jack Evans, you still have time to go away. You still have time to turn down the match. Maybe you'll tweak your, you know, maybe you could say you tweaked your knee or maybe you hurt your back, you know? But because you see, right now, you have a great story. You shocked the world. You beat Eddie Guerrero at Starcade. And I am not denying what the win that was. But Eddie Guerrero is not Rob Van Dam. Eddie Guerrero is not the number one best wrestler in this business. Eddie Guerrero is not Mr. Wednesday Night. He is not Mr. Pay Per View. So, Jack Evans, you think you can shock the world again and get your Cinderella story? Well, here's the reality of things. Every single NCAA tournament, there's a Cinderella story. But what people forget is what usually happens. That Cinderella actually faces a true opponent and they get squashed like a bug. So again, Jack, walk away. There you go, 75, setting up the six main later tonight and of course the two big matches at the pay-per-view. And then we have the women's match that we set up earlier tonight and Gil Kim actually gets a victory over Nikki Radcliffe. And Gil Kim cheats here not because she has to, but because she wants to. And he gets the win over one half of the women's tag champions. You know, the answer put over, you know, it's a really tough match for Nikki Radcliffe, as even though she'll seem have been a very successful team, Gail Kim is one of the best women's wrestlers in the world, a former women's world champion, who is very close to becoming the world champion again at Starcade. But still 79, Gail Kim gets an 80, Radcliffe gets a 61, fun stuff. And, you know, the, they make tail boat motions afterwards, and there you go. So I think that's officially set up. No, it is not. All right. go Gail Kim and Allie Danger taking on your friend and mine Nikki Radcliffe and nope not Allie Danger there we go Eddie can fight Allie and this is a women's tag match where, where is that up there 67 not bad for that celebration and then we have a backstage promo as Amy Weber is with Jason Jett and Cash, and she basically asks them, what the hell is going on with you? And, you know, Jet and Cash explain, you know, they are money. They are, they're two of the top athletes in World Championship Wrestling, but they were being left behind. Left in the merch, the morass of the middle. Only getting opportunities every so often and not getting what we think, what they think they deserved. But when they were on the evolution, they realized they had a chance to make an impact. Because their cash, their money, they are the jet set of professional wrestling. And at Clash of Champions, they're going to shock the world. Um, and you ever points out, you know, they haven't actually ever teamed together. And, you know, Cash says, that doesn't matter. That's how great we are. In our first match, as a tag team, that the world will see, we'll defeat the Hardys, one of the best tag teams of this generation, who are just tag team champions. That's how great we will be. That's how great we are, Amy, because we are that damn good, and we always rise a mile high, because we are money. So there you go, 74. These new promo, basically setting things up and setting up, you know, giving a little heat for the big tech match. And then I have a six-man, honestly a little better than I expected. Um, you know, again, typical pre-pay-per-view six-man, you know. It's so say Skipper and RVD, Booker and Shelton, you know, they get their little spots. I'm sure Booker and RVD do a little spot together as the answers go for their shared history of teaming and then feuding. Uh, Shelton can some suplexes. I'm sure Osei and Skipper can bump good for that. Um, you know, Booker, you know, uh, Jack Evans does some flips. And eventually things break down, but Osei is able to, you know, he says he's the ropes, but does some cheating. They're able to get the pinfall on Shelton Benjamin. As the challengers get the win over the Tag Team Champions right before the pay-per-view, this gets an 84, like I said. Evan gets a 92. Sheldon gets an 82. Burger Dickey gets 79. Robin Dam gets a 94. Skipper gets a 59. And Prince Osei gets a 61. And post-match, the heels celebrate as the answers put over the fact that after Clash Champions, Prince Osei and Eagle Skipper could be very surprising Tag Team Champions. Then we get our natural recap, focusing on Lance Storm, you know, sacrificing himself. And then we have our main event. Okay, good. So, um, I forgot they had great, great chemistry. I should have done this match more often because, like, Sean O'Hare, like I've gone over with you guys before, is 
getting worse for reasons. I'm, I'm sure I'd figure out if I tested them, but I'm not, at least not yet. Um, so yeah, this is, I mean, this is honestly really freaking good. Um, and you know, it's basically Kidman playing the, you know, very jerky, cocky, you know, athletic heel going after O'Hare's knees, going after his back, trying to like, you know, keep him on the mat, you know, same size, all that good stuff, but O'Hare powering out, throwing it around, April getting involved, you know, but O'Hare, you know, tossing it off. And the whole time, AJ Styles is at ringside watching the match, not getting involved, but watching the match. Uh, Kidman gets the advantage late, um, you know, goes low, goes for the kid crusher, but, um, but O'Hare powers out and turns it into electric chair drop, a big lariat, power slam, Another Lariat picks him up, Widowmaker, right in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. 89 overall. O'Hare gets an 83. Kim gets a 97. And he, you know, O'Hare stands up, you know, sort of kicking Kim in the way. And he and Styles stir, share a stare down to end the show as Styles holds up to the world championship. And O'Hare just looks at him as this gets an 89 to finish things out. And overall, the show itself gets us a 92. So good show. Again, I forgot they had great chemistry. I'm sure I should remember that earlier, but you know, what can you do? So yeah, good solid show. I'll go over the full lineup for the pay-per-view here in a second. I think I have everything booked in. I'll do a double check on that in a moment. As this loads, and we get to look this random Luchadora, who is not good. <laughs> Sorry, but you're not. Ah, I gotta love a long load. Long, long, long load. I hope people skip past this part. There we go. Okay, so Revolution, CW Nation missed a WA show. Too bad for him. Um, yeah, also Terry Rowan's got hired by the WE, so she was gone for like I think less than a year and now she's back. Fun stuff. Um, let's see here. Anything wacky? Nope, not really. Uh Zebra Kid, he's a guy. Jimmy, Johnny, Johnny, Zebra. Okay, sure. Sorry, that just distracted me for a second there. All right, and a sort of little preview. Let's go over the full card for the pay-per-view. So we got, of course, the main event of Sean O'Hare versus AJ Styles. Styles' first defense is the world champion, and O'Hare, you know, looking to win back that world championship that has eluded him for a while now. Face versus face, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, then we have the world tag team titles, as Princess A and Steel Skipper got that win in that triple threat match when Jason Jett and Cash got involved, and they're facing off against Booker and Shelton. Um, this is probably the first all, like all black, like match for a title in WWE history, unless I'm forgetting something obvious. Like Simmons never faced anybody. But, um, I mean, I'm sure there's something like with with Booker. Uh, maybe Booker faced off Smiley, so probably the first like tag title match. Unless I'm for, again forgetting something in, super obvious here. Anyway, it's interesting. Um, London versus Jindrak. Of course, London won the title off Jindrak, but Jindrak still wants that rematch. Um, we have, of course, set up this, you know, tonight, Gail and Kim and Elliot Danger versus Social Team for the tag titles. And of course, Angel Fox versus Nikita Cult, where if Nikita Cult or if Angel Fox doesn't win, she does not get another chance at the Women's World Championship as long as Angel Fox is the, is the, is the champion. Uh, then we got Chuck Momo versus Macias. This was a match set up, you know, uh, on Revolution. And then Mark Jindrak got involved in that main event. And now, you know, Macias wants some revenge. And Palumbo has Jindrak as backup still. And of course, he's still store after losing the world title. Uh, Jack Evans was Rob Van Dam. You know, RVD's doing RVD stuff. Evans came out after being Eddie and basically challenged him. And there we are. Angle Helms, Kurt Angle's first match in WCW. And Shane Helms wants to shock the world. And Kurt Angle wants to, you know, set his, you know, wants to have a good first match here. I want to Brown Canyon. I mean, it's... Literally what you guys saw there. And then, of course, Jed and Cash versus the Hardys. Uh, you know, they cause Hardys to lose. You know, they think they've been overlooked in WCW. And now they want to team together and, you know, shock the world by beating one of the best tag teams of the generation on pay-per-view. Storyline-wise, we are looking at uh, Challenges Everywhere at an 80 for women's title feud. Not resting on laurels is at an 89. Uh, Captain Eddie Nitro is at a 69. Dangerous Challenge is at an 88. Never Nobles at a 76. Respect needs to be earned is at an 84. Storm shifts at an 84. Ultimate opportunities is at a 60. Angle's first match is at a 92. Expanding Horizons is at a 69. Money Men is at a 76. New Effing Show is at an 88. Surprising Challenge is at an 86. 
Growing Darkness is at an 81. Top Guys starts out at a 90. See, that's why I don't, see, that's all you need to do an angle because this hot already. And Whose Glory is as generic London. I, I'm sorry, this is a very um, Tony Khan AW booking. Two top guys face off because it's going to be a good match, which I feel bad about. <laughs> um, anyway, so now we just need to look at what's happening in the rest of the wrestling world. Um, so WWE had a SmackDown. So it had Animal defeating Spike Dudley, uh, Devon the Boys defeating Samu, Jack and Avery defeating Veronica Vane and Angel Obscura in a 73, Christian and Streets of the Suburbs defeating the crowd of Henry, Funaki, and Venus. We're going to go looking at Stephen Bradley, and then we get into the very interesting stuff. So, Scott Sander and Kane defeated Gladiator and Billy Gunn. That is sure a match. And I'm not sh like, who's the actual worker of this match? Um, awesome, kind of, but yeah. I mean, Sander isn't quite the broken down Sander, but he's still like not Scott Sander. And Kane and Billy Gunn are Kane and Billy Gunn. Then the main event was Undertaker defeating Rikishi and a dog collar match. Fun stuff. Um, so then, if we look at our dev feds, NWA Wildside is doing NWA Wildside stuff. Ken Suzuki defeated Brett Major. Um, we had Ray Gordy, Todd Sexton, and Jimmy Ray defeat Todd Bullet and, and Morgan and Durante. Lazarus and Tony Jones defeat Rick Michaels and Hot Stuff Hernandez, so I guess their team. And Cassie Riley defeat Ryan Drago. So sort of more of a, like, people we care about. Uh, then we had Lance Hoyt. Okay, so, um, spoiler, I signed Brian Nelson. He's doing jobs on the pre-show to Lance Hoyt. So there you go. That's how that's working out. Uh, Onyx, Kurt Stallings, and Alistair Otsuka defeated Ken Suzuki and Creed and uh, TJ Perkins, who is another signing I made. So some spoilers as far as that goes. Um, yes, he has a way to go. Ryan Morgan defeated Hot Soft Hernandez and Brent Major. Uh, let's see here. Todd Bullitt defeated Rick Michaels and Tony Jones. Sure. Jamie Ray defeated Cassie Riley. Again, sure. And Jason Cross retained the Wildside title while being the Impact Champion, ex-champion. And yeah, that's about it for that. So if we go to American Wrestling Queens, they had their weekly show, which had Josie defeat Ashley Lane, so two newcomers. Uh, Carla Chambers defeat Annette Blanchard, so two member regens. Uh, Madison Eagles defeat Trinship Biggers. Amazing Kong, Lee Hosaka, and Smalley defeat Tracy Taylor and Wicca, who are, uh, of course, Perez and Kara Slice, sure. And Ariel and Amy Circa defeated Michelle and Madison Sinclair. So yeah, Ariel, yeah, interesting stuff there. Um, and then if we go to... HWA. They had a product change. They're now, I believe, um, oh god, I forget what they are. Yeah, they're changing to uh, basically like sports entertainment, which is going to be interesting. Um, so, Mustafa Ali defeats Salvador more Thomas Ellie. Again, Ali's like 17. Um, Jalen McClure and, and Cheech defeat uh, Cloudy and Chris Mordeski. So, Chris Masters, who is yikes. Uh, Barry Bradford defeats Chris Change. Uh, let's see here. Anything else to note? Sean DeVar defeated Billy Bax. Mm. Yeah, not really anything to note on there. Um, I might need to force owners and, and bookers for for these companies. Uh, anyway, Ohio Valley had to work the loops. Um, Rodimer and Rogers, sure. We see Ferdy defeat Sarah Nelson or Sarah Sledge better. Uh, Miss Natural defeated Gabby Galvez, who's a regen. BJ Whitmer defeated John Morrison. Yeah, really, nothing really else of note happening here. Anything really wacky? Nope, nope, nope. And so, if we go to the rest of the Western world, including what's going on. So, oops, that's not, sorry, that's the other thing. News-wise, all right, so... We go back to last week's okay so i always forget what i showed you guys i really should get better at remembering that okay that was friday week two so that was after what i showed you guys okay i do believe yeah i showed you guys this because it was just yeah okay yeah i showed you guys because yeah cool or maybe i didn't no yeah this happened on friday week two so I'll, you guys totally did not see that um so i'll go over that in a second but okay so revolution uh, wc which i did show Okay, so yeah, uh, first big thing. Noah had their um, big show at the, uh, not Kurkin, uh, Budokan. So highlights um, that we, you guys would care about. Steve Blackman defeated Norman Smiley in a 65. Uh, Ricky Marvin defeated Tomo and Honda in a 79. Ganasuki and Inoue defeated Featured Attraction for the Junior Heavyweight titles. Sure. I don't think Ganasuki is a actual Junior Heavyweight, but okay. Hopefully, it'll mean the, uh, at least Kenta's getting a push up the card. 
Uh, Joan Segura defeated Shane Douglas and Teddy Yusuda. So this would probably be a hard-hitting match, at least outside of Shane Douglas, because you have these two big motherfuckers. You have Yusuda, who's like a former MMA guy, and then there's Shane Douglas. Again, Douglas is Gil still getting 68, so he's not terrible. Um, Joe's doing better with him. What, what can you do? Marufuji to beat Cameron Road to retain the junior heavyweight title in 79. Then three straight 99s. Our bangers. This show would get right up on Sony message boards at the time, because I'm old enough to remember that. As Kawada defeated Takayama in his sort of like official debut singles match. This, this is two SOBs kicking the shit out of each other. Then you have Akiyama defeating Ogawa. Uh, then in the main event, Kobashi Masawa. Part 1 million. That's still freaking great. Unfortunately, Miss Swallow, I think, is on his time decline. But yeah, so, so that's an awesome show. Uh, let's see here. Anything else of note here? We loop Chick Fight. So again, the unfortunate side effect of we ha us having a women's division and WD having a women's division is not the best. Like, And this is, all, this is still pre-shimmer, so the women's like kind of rough even with regens. So let's go for this card. We had Lori Lee defeating Susan Morton. We had Fabi Apache, Lady Apache, and Alicia defeat the version of Mickey Knuckles, Justice James, and Heather Savage. And we had the main event of Esther Marino defeating Riku Yoshida, Trinity, and Simply Lush routine Super Gaul Championship title. So again, not great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have Weekly, end of a Night of Champions. Let me see if they actually... Okay. Rick Lee defeat Nova, and Jim Gray defeat Mike Quackenbush. Rick Blade and Trent Acid defeat people, one Jared Julia De Niro. Uh, match record and Simon Diamond feeds Ken and Ivan and Logan Kane. Some JD feed Mosh. Yep, this is a very indie show. Uh, let's see here. I think that's it, because of course you guys all saw Impact. And that is yeah, that's that's it. Nothing really much of note. So, um, that's it for now. If you enjoyed the show, go ahead and give it a like, comment below what you're liking, not liking. Um, and start our channel for only over TW 2020 content. Um, honestly, probably not I might be able to get a basketball GM video up and maybe something else, but um, be sort of a busy portion for the last you know month or so because Thanksgiving and Christmas. But uh, if nothing else, I'll have consistent WSW videos up. So, and that's, you know, obviously what people would be mainly watching. Anyway, that's it for now. So talk later and adios. Have a good one.